Section 4.2, the second derivative test. This section, we are going to use the second derivative test to find the local extrema of the function and solve applications involving points of diminishing returns. Second derivative test for local extrema. Suppose f is a function, f prime and f double prime exist on the open interval a, b, and the c is in the open interval a, b, where the f prime at c is zero, or the slope of the tangent line at the point c is zero. If the f double prime is greater than zero, f at c is a local minimum value, if f f double prime at c is less than zero, then the f of c is a local maximum value. If f double prime equals zero, then the test fails to give any information about local extrema. Another quick way to take a look at it is when you determine the sign of the f double prime, if it is positive, I pretend like I'm happy, so opens up like this, so then the dip of the curve, that will tell you about the local minimum value. Another way, if f double prime is less than zero, the graph is upside down like this. So I see the top of the hill. That means my f of c is the local maximum. Let's take a look at the example. For the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 18 x squared in part a, we are going to find the local extrema using the second derivative test, and then in part B, we're going to find the points of inflection. To find the local extrema using the second derivative test, we have to find the critical value C, which is from a prime at C equals zero, and then determine the sign of the second derivative at the point C, whether it is greater than zero or the second derivative at the point C less than zero. If it is greater than zero, happy, so that can be local minimum point. If f the program at C is great, is less than zero, turns up like this, so it can be the local maximum point. At the point of inflection, we use the second derivative test to determine whether the psi become like from positive to negative or from negative to positive. So let's this function, when we find the first derivative, we get 4, x to the third minus 36, x. The second derivative is 12, x to the second minus 36. First, we're going to find the critical value from letting the f prime be 0. So we have 4, x to the third minus 36x equals 0. Factor 4 and x out, we have x squared minus 9 equals 0. Therefore, we get the critical values x equals 0. This one, it can be broken as x minus 3, x plus 3. That will give us x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. With this way, we can see that there are three critical numbers c equals 0, 3, and negative 3. And next, we're going to use the critical value f double prime at 0 equals 12 times 0 minus 36. Turns out to be negative 36 or less than 0. That means x equals 0 means x equals 0 will give you the local maximum value. Next, x equals c equals 3. The f double prime at 3 equals 12 times 3 squared minus 36. That turns out to be 12 times 9, which is 108 minus 36. The side will turn out positive. If it is positive, the point x equals 3 will give you the local minimum value. Next, when c is negative 3, f double prime at th negative 3 equals 12 times negative 3 to the second minus 36, which turns out to be the same 
side as positive side as when x equals c equals 3. So x equals negative 3 also gives you the local minimum based on the second derivative test. So next part, we're going to find the point of inflection by using the second derivative to find the hypercritical 12x squared minus 36, let it be 0. Factor 12 out, we have 12 times x squared minus 3, or 12 times x minus square root 3, x plus square root 3 equals 0. We got two hypercriticals, x equals square root 3 and x equals negative square root 3. And then use the real number line to determine the chain inside from the left and from the right. From the left to the right of the of each hypercritical value. So we take the complete factor form of the f double prime, which is 12 times x minus square root 3 times x plus square root 3. On the right side of square root 3, the f double prime is going to be positive. Between negative root 3 and 3, the side of second derivative is going to be negative. And on the left interval, from in negative infinity to negative square root 3, the second derivative side will be positive. So the side solution positive to negative and negative to positive so then both of them are point of inflection.